What's good, good people? Uh, this is Ask Ive Solar. I'm Ive. Uh, I like to keep solar simple, powering stuff in case of an outage and saving some coins while I'm at it. You know what I mean? Uh, today's live, I want to talk about some of these deals that I saw during the early prime days, uh, which is yesterday, which was yesterday and today. So any of these deals that you guys want to get, hopefully you use my affiliate link. But if you don't, that's all right. Uh, affiliate links toss a few coins your boy's way to help support the channel and all that jazz. Um, so we're going to do some screen sharing and just look and chat it up about some of these deals that I came across. What's up, Kimber Jack? I saw 2% around here. Woo! All right. Um, for those who are regulars, the family uh, broke out to go do some like returning and all of that jazz. So the house will be quiet. Um, got some water on deck. I put it way over here because whenever I think about the fact that I may spill it, I just get it out of the way. I don't want to take no chances. Now, I'm not saying I got to give a disclaimer. I'm not saying that these are great deals. I'm not saying that these are things that you should buy, but they just caught my eye and I want to be able to talk about them. There's some kind of decent deals in here, um, but it depends on you whether or not it's a good deal. LVP of bro, let's go. What's happening? Gardening with E, what's going on? I was just wondering why I was playing and not coming with the team. <laughs> impatient, impatient. What's up, Nathan? Subject to change. What's happening? Uh, yeah, my day was sunny today. I appreciate that, man. I feel it brings a whole new, like the sun shining brings a whole new feeling in terms of like being blessed. Uh, cause it's like, I'm getting power too. So sunny days are excellent days and even overcast days are good days. As long as it's bright. I did a short about that recently. Um, I'm just going to go in order. It's no particular order. And we're going to do some screen sharing here in a second. Let's present. I don't want to do slides. What are you doing? I share the screen. Let's just go with screen two to keep things interesting. I hope that doesn't bite me in the, yeah, you know I mean, okay. You out there traveling. I dig it. That's what's up. <laughs> that is what's up. Let's add it. Now this particular deal, let me lead out. This is not the best price that I've seen on this go labs. I 200. I just did a video about this saying that this was like the best budget power station when it's like 130. you know what I mean? Like 129. Um, some people have got it a little cheaper, uh, but it's still 159. Now, the reason why I wanted to talk about this one is because people in that video that I released about the GoLabs i200, which is a solid little budget power station, um, you can go check out that video if you want to see what I compared it to. People are like, "Well, you might as well spend the extra 50 bucks um, and get the EB3A." Now, here's the kicker: the EB3A is not always 210. It's tends to run at like 239 um so a whole extra 50 bucks i was just like hmm and this is off of the 160 price i value this thing at about like 130 when the price is like really good if you're curious about the pricing history on any of these devices then you should go to camelcamelcamel.com drop your link in and then it'll give you a pricing history and you kind of have to i guess you have to take that with a grain of salt because it does third party sellers, it does Amazon prices and all of that jazz. But it gives you an idea of whether or not you're actually saving money. That's camel, camel, camel .com. It's like a historical Amazon pricing site that I've used from time to time. Now, hey, Dominique Unique. Um, like I said, at 160, like, eh, I'm not. But in that video, I did make the point that. If you don't have $230 plus the extra $10 that you'd have to spend on the MC4 to 8 millimeter cable, some people say that Blue Eddy will send you one or reimburse you the money. I don't know. I haven't tried that yet. But that's like $240. I'm sorry, $220. And that's the sale price. So I don't know, man. If you kind of just want something, I like this one for a nice budget power station. I'll put all of these links in the description after the live i didn't have time to put them in in advance that's my bad let's see the next one we got here 
This one is a tough one, but I mean, before the EB3A, the Jackery being 209 was a good look because there was no there was no LiPo power station in this price range that was like mainstream, I would say. You had the EcoFlow that was sometimes dipped down to 199. It was rare, but it did happen. Uh, you had um, the energize of p320 but it charged at 60 watts from solar the jackery charges at 85. if i was you i would not consider the jackery over the eb3a the eb3a is also on sale today it's in one of these tabs so this is not a good look but it's a cool device it's nicely built it's well made it's light and it's smaller than the um the eb3a the eb3a is pretty beefy i have a short about it where i kind of compare them all like just looking at them um you have to look at my short shelf, but I did talk about it. Hey, don't mean what's happening. Uh, but it's on sale today. 210 is not the cheapest I've seen this. The cheapest I've seen it is 199, but I've only seen it at 199 once. Now, my Jackery 300, I like it. I have the device. I bought it at 210 um, with some help from one of the viewers. Uh, helped to bring it down a bit. I'm not sure about how much, um, but it's a nice little device. I thought I was having an issue with it charging. It seemed to me that it was pulling in a very low amount of wattage. I just did a test on it today and it was comparable. So I may have to wait until one solar, like summer sun, or I have to try and angle this thing perfectly towards the sun to get the max power. Because what I was seeing before this particular test, and I tested this like three times, four times, two out of times very early on, my other devices were getting more power. And I mean like 10 to 15 watts more power. It would get like 32 or 43. And then the other ones would be getting like 60. But on the last two tests, it was very comparable. It would be getting like 42. And the other one would be getting like 44. And I tested it compared to the Oops, the Wapes, uh, the Bull Bat, which... I adapt eight millimeter to 5525 and I tested it against the big blue, um, which is a 5525 device as well. So, you know, I tested it and, you know, it did okay today. So I'm, I'm going to have to wait. <laughs> What's up? I can good to see you. It could be that the panel was only putting out about 40 watts today with its angle because I was looking at my 200 watt rich solar that's on my EB70S and that dip was getting about 107 so it was like i'm gonna have to angle it to test because that output could have just been low at that particular time with the sun being low in the sky with the haze and all that jazz so it's not conclusive yet but i can't wait to find an issue with it so i could reach out to jackery on it because uh, I, I need to talk to them that's for sure let's see the ecoflow extra battery is 159 do you think that will dip lower huh that's a good question i can't imagine it going much lower than that i think 149 maybe um but i've had issues with my ecoflow and my ecoflow river battery they did not work well together i don't know if people will have uh issues with that i think nathan also had an issue it was either nathan or nathan did you have an issue with your ecoflow max Somebody, when I was going through that, was very intrigued with whether or not my issue would persist, and it did. I eventually ended up um, getting my money back for that battery. Uh, I don't know where it went, though. I got to check on that. I think it went directly to like a credit card or something like that. Um, and I just used the EcoFlow base model. So, all right, moving right along. This one, okay, this one isn't on Lightning anymore. But it has $100 off, so it's $499. This is the EB3A, which retails for about $200. And then it's going down to $499. So this isn't a good deal anymore. This was cheaper. I'm pretty sure this was like, um, this was about $400. So Blue Eddie's deals may have maxed out. My bad. Uh, so that one's not up anymore. Actually, another deal that I pulled up from Blue Eddie. Now, Blue Eddie may still have stuff on sale on their site. I saw Hobotech post something about like 30% up to 30% off or something like that. I just kept kept it moving. It was just like a, a picture post. What's going on, Lee? Um, I'm chilling, man. Just out here hanging out. House is quiet. We, we're doing the thing. That kind of sucks. All of this stuff is going away. <laughs> I had these tabs open. <laughs> but, well, let me, let me just kind of, you look into this. 
the, you know, the EB3A is 210, right? They're selling this for $600 with a $100 off coupon to bring it down to $499 or $500. Bucks. If you think about that, that 120 watt PV panel is not worth $300 to me. Um, I feel like with that deal that they had, they both were about 200 bucks, and I thought that that was cool because you know that I like to live around the two. Actually, the standard for most portable panels, folding panels, is $2 per watt. I don't know where these people are coming off charging more than $2 a watt for these folding panels. I mean, it's a 120, so I'll give them something there. You know what I mean? It's like 240. So I, I give them a little grace, but it's a 100 watt panel, man. Like, you may get a little more power. You may get a little less. Don't take my word. What's going on, T-Wayne? Good to see you, man. I haven't read your comment yet, but I just see your name in bold. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. So the lightning deal has gone away. My bad again. Ready kind of out here in these streets. Again. Um, This one was interesting in that it's a rigid panel. It's a little cheaper than a dollar per watt. 175 watt energy panel for 163. Only one left. Uh, it was on the lightning deal too. They're kind of winding these lightning deals down. Buy pre-owned. Very good. Oh, these cats is wild. And now they're doing the pre-owned price. Man, I'm so disappointed in what Amazon is doing. It's still a 12th, right? What's happening here? So this one is a bit of a bust too. That sucks. I'm like three for six here. Sheesh. Hopefully the Bouge RV 100 watt panels are still on Lightning Deal because that was a good deal. Anyway, this one was about 163. I thought it was new. I could have saw it wrong, but I thought it was uh, uh, a little bit less than a dollar per watt for a 175 watt panel. Now, these panels, guys, just so you know, they, they all about, for the most part, the 175 watt panel is going to be a little bit smaller than a 200 watt panel, a little bit smaller than a 180, probably the same size. Renergy panels run big. I don't know if you guys saw, maybe you didn't. It was a vlog that I put on Patreon, but I basically bought a 200 watt panel and it was shattered. I don't know if I put that one out to the public. Maybe I did. I'm not sure. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, but that one's weird too. So, if you could get a rigid panel for less than a dollar a watt, it's a good look. That's the moral of the story, which is kind of why I wanted to talk through some of this thing, this stuff to let you guys kind of know how my brain processes through these deals. So hopefully you can start to apply some of this information to you. This one is interesting, too. It's not necessarily going to be useful to any of you guys. But whenever I see a rigid panel at a dollar per watt, especially these smaller ones, because these smaller ones, they'll try and tax you. Like, let's see what the normal price is on here. Looking at 40 bucks, 40 bucks for a 25 watt panel, when all you have to do is just spend 100 bucks to get a 100 watt panel and you add a dollar a watt. The same thing happens with those 50 watt panels. Um, again, not a good fit, but if you had a novelty kind of project and you wanted to have a nice small panel, let's look at the size of this because I thought the size was really cool. I saw these people sitting on a boat. Like, look at that. Isn't that cute? 25 little watts of power. <laughs> I think that that's interesting. It caught my eye. I was like, oh, that's nice. I know uh, Set Type has some like projects around his home that he's going to use 100 watt panels on because that just makes sense. But I wonder if a smaller panel like this would be convenient for some of those little like, you know, post lights type of things, projects, garage gate openers like Will Prowse did a video on with some lipo batteries. It caught my eye because it was close to a dollar per watt. I thought that that was interesting. What's next? I can't necessarily say that I would recommend this panel. I've never heard of these people before, but a 100 watt panel typically for the most part is a 100 watt panel. They'll all give you about 60, 70 watts, 80 watts, maybe a little bit higher if you happen to be closer to standard test conditions, which is what STC stands for. But when you could pay a dollar for watt, for actual output, that's always a good look, which is why when I first got into solar, my first panels was uh, HQST, but they, because that dips were 84. Those Renogy 100 watt panels were like 113, 115, 119. And I'm like, bruh, I'll take the HQSTs. I ain't got no problem with that at all. So when I see something at like 70 bucks for the amount of power that is likely going to pull out, put out, then that's a good look. I'm not saying I recommend it, but 
it's still a good price. So let's look at these measurements. So it's 40 by 23, which is kind of like those old, those panels. Um, my first set of HQST panels are about these measurements. It's like a little more square, but they're a little taller than the new one that I have. I have like a, a HQST now that's a little more compact. I believe it is like 34 by 24. And then I shared a link on the community tab of the new power that I think was a little bit more square than that, which is interesting. I like different like panel dimensions. I think that stuff is cool. It could be like the crammed space in me where it's like, okay, if I put this on my porch, if I have to deal with shade, shade on a longer panel will be more of a problem because that panel spans a wider space. Whereas like shade on a square panel, you kind of have a little more room to maneuver because the panel is not as wide. So that shade, when it slowly creeps in, is not going to get on the panel as soon. Then you could turn the panel vertical. But as many of you know who've been hanging out for a while, I have this overhang over my balcony, my, my porch. That's a, like a, a balcony porch or whatever. So I can't always go tall because then the sun kind of gets blocked by that little overhang. So that's kind of how my brain works in terms of dealing with um different size panels because options is cool I'm, I'm into that 69 bucks i mean I don't, you can't beat that now this one is interesting what's up former marshall what's happening this one is interesting the eco worthy 195 because jason Noy just did a video comparing his bougie v eco flow and new power and i think the eco worthy's eco flow the eco worthies didn't do well. So I thought that that was very telling. So um, one caveat you guys got to know is it's beginning to be shopping season. Um, we're getting close to it. Not so much, but with Prime Day happening, Amazon returns are, how do I do this? Let's see. Boom. The Amazon return window is all the way out to January 31st. So anything you're interested in grabbing and picking up and you don't want to have to be worried about the 30-day return window, now is the season to do that because you get to live with that all the way through the shopping season and determine whether or not you like it, you don't want it, and you can send it back. You have to be careful with power stations because not all power stations are returnable. You also have to be careful with everything to look at the return policy because sometimes you can only return it if something is wrong with it, and that stuff gets pretty tricky. So you want to be repeat. <laughs> you want to be reading this policy over here, I don't know if you can see that, but returnable until January 31st, 2023. And it says in details for the two twenty for the 2022 holiday season, returnable items between October and December can be returned until January. That's what it's saying right there. Interesting panel. Let's look at the measurements on this. How tall is it? 58 inches by 26. That's that seems on par with a lot of the panels that I have around here, my Rich Solar, my HQST 190, and all of that jazz. Also keep in mind that panels have gone up in price ever since the, the not even the pandemic, but something happened in the last like 18 months um, that kind of caused some supply chain issues. I mean, like literally outside of the pandemic and the supply chain issues that we had way back when. There was like some new stuff that was happening that was causing an issue. It could have been the war in the Ukraine or something like that. I don't know, but things started to kind of get a little interesting. Like right now, that rich solar panel that at its cheapest was like 189. This was many, this was a good 18, 24 months ago. Hobo Tech had a coupon on it, which got me interested in it. Uh, I think it's at like 220 now. And it's been that for like the last year or so i'm kind of underestimating how long ago it's been because i've been into solar for a good bit i think since i don't know anyway that's not important uh hey and good to see you thanks for hanging out um these panel prices are going up that's the moral of the story so anytime you see a panel that you might be interested in that's cheaper than the going rate of 200 dollars for a 200 watt panel then i you know i would get intrigued by that let's also take a look at the um uh, the efficiency, not the efficiency, the watts, the volts and the amps. I'm sorry. So I'm curious about that. 
So this one is an interesting one. It's not as bad as some panels, but right here it says the maximum current is 10.27 amps and the volts is 19 volts. Um, I have a video coming out soonish where I start to put panels in series, but I was talking about actually, no, no, no. It's the Bouge RV, uh, 180 video that's coming out, uh, soon, if not tomorrow. Uh, so what this all equates to, if you watch my rich solar video or my HQST video, you know, the EB 70, the EB 55, the EB 3A, all of those devices have that hard eight or 8.5 amp cutoff. So for people who have those devices, remember the EB70 was one of the first devices to come out with LiPo in about that 700 watt hour range. And it was for a really good price. So a lot of us have that device, but we couldn't find panels to max out. You would end up getting like 134, 143. I think the highest you can actually get because of the eight amp limit is like 166 per Jason noise testing. But we were trying to find, especially me, um, we were trying to find solar panels that had a closer amp output to the eight amps because that, let me change this around to make the point. So it had a closer amp limit to the eight amps because then the volts had to be higher because the volts times the amps need to equal 200 watts. So it's like this balancing act. As the amps go up, the volts go down because what times what has to be 200 or 195 or 180. A 100. So when you get those amps lower, the volts go higher. So then you have a higher voltage at your 8 amp cap. So if you got like 19 volts at 8 amps, that gives you what it gives you. But if you take and you have 15 volts, 16 volts at your 8 amp camp cap, that gets you less. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit more in the video, not in great detail. Um, watch the rich solar video, uh, and the HUST video, but you basically want to be mindful of that as well. If you have those EV, um, products that they have, I don't think it applies to anything else, but those 70 to 70 S the EB three a and the EB 55. Now these things were on sale for the, um, prime day, the EB 70, the EB three a, they had these deals on them with these panels. Um, I wonder if their 350 watt panel is done being on a deal as well. But it made me think, I was wondering if like, I wonder if they're going to update that screen um, soon on the 55 and the 70 S series soon, or will they just, will they just replace them? I don't know. So good thoughts about this panel being one, what, what is this? 160, 165. Hey, you know, that ain't bad. Okay, this one appears to still be on a lightning deal. This is a good look. All right, let's pull it up. This is the Bougie V 9BB 100 watt panel. I really, even though I'm over 100 watt panels, I would like one of these. Um, I still have to make my videos and kind of fulfill my thing with Bougie V. I have two panels for them and two videos I need to make. They've both been recorded. I just need to edit them and put them out. But I like this panel. Ah, man, it's like $83 for the newest 9BB, which is bus bar and not the 5BB. They're still 100 watt panels in my experience, but, you know, it's newer technology. Maybe it's a little more efficient. Maybe it runs a little cooler. Maybe it deals with heat a little bit better. I don't know, but it's it's nice. And it's a nice, small looking panel. Jason Noy does have a video on it. Um, I, I, I just like this $83. Remember what I talked about before with that other panel? Whenever you can get below the $100 mark, you're pretty much doing pretty good to say you'll probably get about 70 watts, 75 watts. If you angle it perfectly, you may get a little bit more, but this is a good look. They have another panel that's on sale as well that may be of interest to you guys. The Flex Solar, we talked about this recently. I had a, a community post on this. This one is on sale. 60 watts for $80 is a good look. I don't care how you slice it uh, because even though it doesn't have any stands, they have it standard up there. It does have um, little loops. Let me see if I can make emphasis on that. It does have some little loops in there where you could hang it to get better something or another. I don't know. Uh, maybe lay across the hood of your car. That could be a good look. Uh, I don't believe it's ETFE. I think it's PET. 
Um, I had a video about this, so you can check that out for more details. Uh, but this, if you lay it flat, you'll get about 40 watts. And you know, I love the idea of getting the watt output compared to the dollar amount for real output. So $2 per, uh, per watt for real output is always a good look for me versus what this panel would typically cost being 60 watts. It would be 120 watt, $120 because they'll charge you $2 per watt on the rated output or the output on paper instead of the real output. So for 80 bucks, this is a good look. It folds up really nicely. Let me see if I can show you. Nice little compact, thick, chunky panel. Good for tossing in a car, having some power. It does not have MC4. It has a 5521 to 5521 cable and some adapters. It also has a 5521 female to battery clamp, which has been useful to me in my testing uh, that I was doing with charging my batteries. I'll talk about that in the future in a future video. But 80 bucks, man, that, that's a good look. Okay, this is this one is good. I think this is the 5BB model. The 9BB model is on sale as well. $160 for 180 watts Bougie V panel. You compare that to something like the HQST, which is 190. I believe that panel, ew, I don't want to lose my place. So let's see if I can do this. That did not work. Um, let's see how much the HQST 190 is. Alexa found. Shut up, Alexa. Nobody cares about you or what you found. Oh, they have a 9BB now. Good for them. That thing is 294. So this joint is a 5BB panel for $204. When I purchased it, it was $169. Um, so yeah, you know, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> <Ba -dum -bum. laughs> so you got 180 watts. You'll also see in the 180 watt Bouge RV 9BB video that they're pretty similar. So just leave it at that. <laughs> oh, the 9BB is here as well on this particular link. Let's just look at it real quick. This is a 180 for 180. So it's a, a straight dollar per watt. But this is good because this, this panel is not cheap directly from Bouge RV. I think it's in the like the two hundred and sixty dollar range or two hundred and fifty, forty. Either way, uh, I don't know what's so fancy about nine BB technology, but that's that cost is a little out of control. Um, that's how I feel about it. But uh, this is a good look as well if you're looking for some one hundred and eighty. I consider these to be kind of two hundred watt panels because even comparing them to my Rich Solar two hundred watt panel, they're comparable. Um, you know, they're comparable. It just they they were about the same size and all that jazz. Be stay on the lookout for the Bougie V180 panel. That one is pretty much edited up. You know what I'll do? Uh, for the folks who support me on Patreon, uh, I have an a, a level. It's a monthly kind of support thing. No pressure. Um, but the lowest level I have is three dollars. I'll put the video out tonight on Patreon for the one the Bougie V189 BB video that I shot. Uh, just so for anybody who's curious, I know Sharon supports me on there. Vet, uh, I can't think of Silver Surfer contributes, Set Tight contributes. I appreciate those guys. So they get the videos a little early. Now, not all videos that I put over there are behind the paywall. You, I can make public posts as well. So it's good to just kind of follow the page, check in, scroll down and see what's available to, to you. Even if you don't want to pay the monthly fee, or maybe you see something there and you kind of convinced to pay the monthly fee. It's three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. I think the highest is like twenty or something like that. But only if you feel like supporting your board. No, no pressure. No pressure at all. Uh, this one has gone. Has it gone up? It was on sale too. I think it was like 199. I'm pretty sure I remember it being 199. The Jackery panel typically runs a little higher, kind of like the X Star panel, like 269. I think this Jackery panel typically runs like 299. Yeah, it's 299 regular price. Maybe it drops down to 290, 280. I don't necessarily monitor Jackery panel prices, but for 209 dollars, you're gonna get really solid output from this panel, comparable to the X Star. The X Star is a little bit better compared to 
when you think about some of the videos that other people did, um, let me get some water. When you think about some of the, the videos that other people did, the X star seems to perform a little bit better. But they look pretty much identical. So this is a good look. If you need a portable panel, bifold, simple. Bifold is a little bit bigger than trifold and quadfold. Um, that's some of the benefits of trifold and quadfold panels. They're thicker, but they're smaller. The the form, the squarish factor is a, a lot smaller than these bifold panels. But two hundred nine dollars ain't bad. It only comes with the eight millimeter. You also have to be mindful of the fact. Of whether or not this has the new eight millimeter on it or the old school one i don't know that but uh let's look at this return policy <laughs> where is it where is it where did i miss it um i don't see the return policy here i don't know why it's not showing me the return policy i think it has something to do with the fact that you can buy at regular price for two ninety nine, which is just ridiculous. Um, <laughs> maybe this one. No, this one's in the black one. Oh, that one looks a little flyer. Interesting. This may be the new version. I know there's multiple versions of this dip. So if you want the straight up eight millimeter port, you may want to avoid this one. But I don't know. Check out Hobo Tech to see if he did a video on this new kind of black paneled one. Um, and you know, just kind of do your best. But you should have a good amount of time to return this tip if you had an issue with it. It should be January 31st of 2023, just like all the rest of the joints I've showed. Now, this one. What, come on, man, get out of the way, man. You. <laughs> Sheesh, what are you doing here? Okay, that scrolled all the way down on me. Son of a blues player. This one is interesting to me um, because... I was on the lookout for 60 watt panels. Um, you look at it, it's it's right around that sweet spot of $2 per watt on paper output for the wattage. So it's a 60 watt panel, it's 125. I would never buy this panel, but I'm personally intrigued by it. I like the form factor of it because of my little uh, X-Star dip that I never use, but I like the idea of it, which is why I made those videos. Um, this little X star takes eight millimeter and turns it into the highlight for me is a 45 watt PD. Now, the interesting thing about that, somebody had commented on the video and was like, Hey, you know, panels have USB ports as well. And I was like, you're right. You're, you're certainly right. Um, but those panels, a lot of those panels don't have 60 watt rated outputs. I, I can't wait till I have a folding panel that has a 60 watt output on it. Um, that would be cool. I wish this little box was 60 watts. That would be dope. I would probably use it a lot more if it did. But the ideal situation is to just have a solar panel that has 60 watt PD output on it. That would be cool. But I like the form factor of this dip for 60 watts. The price is kind of, you know, it's not my lane, but I think that something like this will work well with that EU4S because nine times out of 10, it's only going to get out about 40 watts anyway. Maybe what? 12, um, I, I would say 40 watts. I would expect 40 watts out of this. Maybe a little more. Somebody in the review talked about they get about 50 from it if it's angled properly. But that one was interesting to me. If you need like a little small 60 watt panel, I like the price on it. 120 would be better. But what are you going to do, right? You contrast that to the 60 watt flex power joint that's going to get you about 40 watts. And it's $80. So it's like, what are we doing here? But the form factor is what is going on speaking of flex solar this is another one that's less than two dollars per watt i don't particularly fancy all of these panels because <laughs> that dip is going to fold up really thick actually the person i worked with to get the one that i have 60 watts wanted to send me i believe this one i do believe this one is etfe though the one that i have is not or they have some versions that are etfe now which i think is cool which means it'll last a little longer this stuff is cool, man. When you could get it for actually two dollars a watt. Also, smaller portable power portable panels, power stations. Also, small smaller devices typically run you more anyway. Like Anchor and Big Blue, they have like fifteen, maybe twenty-one watt panels. 
those dips will be like eighty dollars because whenever you start getting into super portable, super compact, the price typically goes up. You know, what I mean, just think about. I mean, it's just been a long time since this has been relevant, but desktop computers used to be a lot cheaper than laptop computers because people want to pay for mobility. This mobility stuff kind of plays a role in the pricing, but getting this 40 watts at $75 is a good look. Um, also, that Flex Solar 60 watt joint, <laughs> it's funny, it has a 60 watt PD port on it. And I'm like, why can't the Rock Pals that I have or the freaking X Star that I have have a 60 watt port? That panel will almost never get 60 watts, but it has a 60 watt PD port on it. I think that that's hilarious. But hey, you know, they aim for the stars, landed on the moon. Let me see what y'all snapping and trapping about. Uh, da, 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 da. What do I think about the EcoFlow Delta for, um, yeah, not for 1099. The Delta 2 is about to come out, which is LiPo. So that's not a good look. That's not a good look at all. I'm going to talk about that soon, too. Let's see what Jimmy Hemi is talking about. Winter coming. See any good deals on electric blankets? That's a good question. Let's let's put a pin in that. Let's check the uh, electric blankets soon. I haven't checked. Did you know if you go to Amazon and search for anything, there's a filter you can turn on that shows you the deals only? So you can look and see what stuff is on the deals. And if you go to this early access there's a way where you click on it, um, wherever it is, like this early access sale. If you go to your homepage, it's a little more um, pronounced. But then this box up here will change to say early access thing. So you can search against that. But we'll we'll, we'll poke around. I need a um, blanket for sure. I didn't know you were streaming. I need to grab one or two panels. I need a few hundred more watts for cheap. Oh, man. I st I kind of feel bad telling you that I'm streaming because <laughs> it's just like... This feels like, I don't know. If you want me to start letting you know, I can. Because uh, we chat all the time. But I can tell you. So here we go. This one is peculiar. 721 doesn't move me. I would have liked to see this at 700. I wonder if it will hit 700 on Black Friday. I would like to see it a little bit cheaper than 700. I mean, $700 is a lot of money. But it's a 350 watt panel. I actually have to start paying more close attention to these larger panels of 400 watt by ecoflow blue eddy has this 350 um i don't think rock Pels has it anymore but they had like a 400 watt panel it was basically like the i don't know how to explain it but the the pv 200 they're really floppy panels and i'm not a big fan of that but what the all powers has taught me is that i wonder what these key shortcuts are shift one that's not useful what the all powers 200 watt panel that I have taught me is that taking those larger panels and just ground deploying them, it I love it. I love it. They take up the same amount of space as a 100 watt five folding panel, which is my preference. I like that form factor. The quad folds are cool, but setting up a quad fold panel is annoying, um, especially if it has multiple legs. That's just that's a chore. I tried to I was messing around with the all powers, trying to angle it. And it's just I, I'm not a fan. But again, I'm just a home dude, you know what I mean? I'm not out in the bush and camping and boondocking and all that jazz where it's like you need to get that power. You need to angle that thing towards the sun because, it, you know, power is necessary. That's not my story, you know what I mean? And I have multiple panels. I have multiple rigid panels. So I like a flat deploy, 100 watts from something that takes up the size of a 100-watt panel. I love that idea. That's going to change the game for me. So if I could ever get a 350 or a 400 from EcoFlow, I would just ground deploy it. Whenever I need to bang out, I want some extra power. Weather is uh, amenable to that. Lay it all the way out. Toss something out there. Hopefully, I have a cable long enough to kind of make a difference where I could pull it out of the sun and not have to, like, monitor it every half hour, 45 minutes because the sun moves fast in terms of shadow. Um, but that's a good look. Let's see. What's up, Kohak? Have you purchased anything from this Amazon early access? No, I didn't purchase anything that was on sale, sadly. I did just buy a 50-foot 12-gauge cable from Windy Nation. Um, and that's a whole situation. Uh, I just put the short out about that uh, about a little bit before that. I did buy that recently. Um, 
I wish the stuff that I bought was on sale, but it wasn't. I bought a bug assault after watching Rhea's Shack Ham Radio. She was talking about those spider lantern flies and how she's been going to war with them with her bug assault. I was like, you know what? I wanted a bug assault for a while for the carpenter bees, but um, some people were saying that they didn't, the gun just didn't have the knockdown power for carpenter bees. And I went a whole different way with the carpenter bees, which is permethrin, um, which is fantastic. We pretty much don't have a carpenter bee problem anymore. And the problem wasn't ours to begin with. My neighbor had a carpenter bee issue. And because we're so close, I'm never living this close to anybody again. Um, they were a nuisance to me and they started to be in our uh, um, our wood. We got rid of them in our wood a long time ago, like the first summer we had them. But they had them as well. So I ended up buying some permethrin. I told him about it. He asked me to order one for him. I did it. I gave it to him. I don't know if they ever used it, but I was spraying his stuff down. That was kind of on my property uh, line and getting rid of them and all that jazz. Now, so it's a long answer to the question. I did not. <laughs> um, I'm in the market for some panels, but uh, I'm looking at some used panels. I'm looking at some panels from the marketplace. But some things need to kind of line up. I don't think they're going to line up. Wink, wink, hint, hint. Um, <laughs> but we'll see if I get surprised or not. Uh, but I'm eyeing some panels, so I haven't purchased anything. Um, let's see. I have a 100-watt Renogy 12-volt, 129, and my prime hole was waiting to hear what you thought. A one, I have a 100-watt Renogy 12-volt for $130. I wouldn't pay $130 for a Renogy 100 watt panel, especially now with that Bouge RV being at 84. I would I would dump that out of your I would buy that Bouge RV right now, to be honest with you. There's no reason not to get that dip. It's the 9BB newer technology. I don't think the Renogies have that newer technology. Um, it's a little bit smaller than the Renogy panels, I believe. I think they are 21. I think they're like 40 inches tall, and this one's like 38 point something. Uh, the Renogy panels are nice size. That's why I got them. They're, they're a nice little different form factor. I bought one because I wanted the different form factor, and I end up liking it. Something about the balance in that panel, because it's longer and wider, I feel like I could easily move it. When I was into 100-watt panels and I needed to kind of move them around every now and then throughout the day, maybe twice, three times a day, um, I like that that panel felt a little more balanced um, instead of my HQST 100-watt panel that I had. So I would grab that Renogy and I would bring it out to the front of the yard when my backyard solar was done. When I was more, I had a more like uh, uh, humble setup back then. <laughs> um, I would buy that 100 watt Bouge RV. Or if you could, if you have the space and the capacity to just deal with a 200 watt panel, I would get the 9BB 180. Or you could get the cheaper one for 160. So if you have the coins, I would I would make a move if, if that's if that's the look. I don't know. I know you I kind of remember what power stations you have, but um I think you had an AC. Did you have an AC 30? You have something that's like been holding you down for a while. Let me know down in the comments. And Jen Show, what's up, my brother? Good to see you. Thanks for hanging out for a little bit or for long, however. And Bouge V9 BB. Thanks, Jimmy. I appreciate that uh hey smash that like button especially on this one because this one is more of a, a public service to a majority of people um versus like just our core community whereas like getting that live stream out to more people um is not always useful but it gets sends good signals to youtube but this particular one is a good look because prime day is gonna happen again black friday is gonna be a thing so you will probably see a lot of these prices repeat themselves and maybe be a little bit lower so this way you're um, decision is more informed if you don't want to bite the bullet now or pull a trigger now. Um, you know, it's a good look. Let's see. Picked up a portable top solar 100 watt panel on sale for 118, but it's jumped back up. A 100 watt panel top so Oh, portable folding. I got you. I got you 100%. I may have seen that one. It may be in these freaking links, um, sadly. <laughs> Right, I see the Eaglefold Delta Two for nine ninety nine. That might get me since I've been looking at a more powerful station. That man, I'm 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 gonna do a sit down video about that Eco Flow Delta Two soon. 
it may come out sooner than I think. Um, but it has no competition at the thousand dollar market is pretty scarce. It, there's no life offering in that market in that price point. I mean, it literally has no competition and it's an 1800 watt inverter. I think I'm pretty sure it's 1800 watts or maybe a little bit more. Um, the EcoFlow Delta Mini was a good option for a while, but it still wasn't life And I think it started out at seven ninety nine. Um, but this one pretty much blows everything away right now. Nine ninety nine for Lifeo is it's bananas. It's the look. It's definitely the look. Unless you're gonna take five hundred extra dollars, or maybe three hundred extra dollars, depending on what you're gonna catch on sale, and go get a Ace Volt or Acatel or a Greasel or a, I think another one's called something with an H. No, Inor, E N O. Are. They emailed me and they were thinking about sending it to me. I never count my eggs until they hatch um, because they didn't they didn't follow up with me. But uh, they had like a nice olive dwab, greenish one. Maybe it's not olive dwab or whatever the word is. Uh, but if you could throw in another few hundred dollars, you could get a 2000 watt inverter, 2000 um, watt hours of power. But it's a non, it's an off the beaten path. Now, that particular power station by Acatel, H Volt, there's a few, quite a few companies putting their name on that. So, you know what I mean? You, you kind of do it that what you may. But if you wanted something mainstream, the Delta 2, I, I don't think it can be beat. And it's expandable. Um, those expandable batteries are annoying because they still can't do anything else without the mothership. So, that's that sucks. But I don't know. Let's see. When I filtered for deals, I saw the Renergy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I ain't tripping. They got it used now for 163. Thanks. Yes, Donald. What's up, the Donald? <laughs> What's going on, man? Corey K, good to see you. Um, done already liked. I appreciate that. AC 30. But if they come down, I really want the 200 P. Um, I'm in the hurricane territory. AC 30 only keeping the laptop and a few others happy. I gotcha. Interesting. Now, the downside of the Acatel, Ace Volt, those type of joints is the 50 volt max solar input limit. So you kind of got to go series parallel to really bang out on that. It's a weird little joint. But the EcoFlow dips, they they for sure, I'm pretty sure that dip, actually don't get me to making that up. It goes up to 800 watts, I believe. Um, somebody fact check me here. What's up, some more? It goes up to 800 watts, but does it all does it go all the way up to the 145 volt input? I think that that could be an issue for that Delta 2. Um, I'm not going to deviate at the moment. I guess I can. Let me just see if I can figure this out. Um, Delta 2, because this stuff is not always straightforward on their website. I had a hard time finding with the river... Uh, max amperage input was i guess i'll just drag this over here so y'all could come along for the ride let's go to specs the reason why i'm looking into this is i wonder if it does the 145 volt input which allows you to put a bunch of panels in series and then just wow completely out <laughs> Yeah, that's the issue. That's the one thing. So it's actually very comparable <laughs> to the Acatel, Ace Volt, uh, Greasel, Inor, or whatever they are. That sucks, man, the 60 volt input. But I put those three Renergy panels in series, which are 12 volt panels, which means they sit at about 20 volts, 21 volts, something like that. And I did a whole test. The video is going to come out soon. I did a whole test and uh, it came out to about 59 volts. But what you have to be careful about, I, I would assume, I'm going to hope, I'm going to have to ask Wayne. I would hope that the real voltage input is like 65 or 68 to give you some cushion, but they tell you 60 so you don't milk it because people will mess up their devices trying to push it to the max. I'm hoping that it's 65 or 68. Uh, hopefully he can find that out for me. But... This dip being 60 volts is interesting. Those two panels, what I was trying to say is that 
but under standard test conditions, under more than standard test conditions, you could have higher voltage. That's why I was wondering if it was higher than 60 volts. So you could possibly be in a situation where you cause an issue. Now, it is an eco flow. I can't imagine. They're supposed to have over voltage protection in that dip. Now, I'm hoping that's over voltage protection on the input and not some weird output type of thing. That's the only thing that would make sense to me. Why else would you need over voltage protection? But on some cheaper power stations, you got to be very careful with how throwing too much voltage at it because it could fry it. But if your dip has over voltage protection, my understanding is it should just not charge. But that sucks that it's 60 volts. Hopefully it's a little higher. We will see. All right, back to the lecture at hand. Perfection is perfected. So I'll let him understand from a young G's perspective. And before <laughs> I have to find a kind of, anyway. Um, let's see. Well, how is 120 volt delta two? Yeah. Uh, but to ends, I guess to ends desire the AC 200 P has come down in price, right? Isn't that thing like $1,200 now? So that's a, that's an interesting, um, juxtaposition. <laughs> I have part portable and rigid panels. The portables are great for leaving in my truck, can charge a car battery or PWM and camping, blah, 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 blah. Rigid for home storage, plugged in 24 seven, no storage. Hope this helps someone. Yeah, that's why I like rigid panels. I want them out there working all the time. Let's see, character count makes a comment. Tough, I dig that. <laughs> Just got a two part it. I need to permanently mount some panels on top of a van and there's a lot of really bad roads to travel. So I'm thinking flex panels. Anybody know any good flex panels? Ah, uh, that's tough. The SIGs panels are good, I, I assume. They're they're like literally made and they're getting cheaper now. Um, Bouge RV has like somewhat affordable SIGs panels. Um, they offered to send me one, but they had that sticky stuff on the back and that's just useless for me. I really love the SIGs idea. Um, Actually, Bean may be sending me some like SIG style panels, uh, but they, they have an interesting voltage. So it's an interesting situation. They sit at like 30 volts, 31, 32, 33, which is a problem for most smaller power stations. And the amp output on them is kind of low. So it's going to be an interesting thing to see about putting. Uh, I think what they were meant is for solar roofs to kind of be connected. But I don't know. I don't know. I I'll keep talking to him about it. If he sends me some, um, we've been chatting about it in Telegram, but uh, I don't know, man. I, I, you know, flex panels, Renergy has the flex black label dips that I like, but I'm not out there in the elements. You know what I mean? The, the overarching thought for most people, but it was a logic from about three to four years ago, is that flexible panels suck. You know, I mean, the ETF E ones will last a little bit longer, but at the end of the day, they won't last as long as rigid panels. And I think that that's an interesting uh, comparison. But I don't I guess I don't look at things through the lens of how long they will last all the time. I mean, if something lasts me for like two years, I feel like, eh, you know, it lasts me two years. That's that's a good look, but it's something to be mindful of. What's going on here? Get it together. Grouch. Talk about that. The All Powers 140 uh, watt folding panel. All Powers, I consider them to be a really kind of solid budget offering. I'm sure these are not ETFE. They're probably PET, which is something you want to avoid because they won't last as long. But if you won't use them very often, then, you know, you, you get by, you can pull it out, get some power. It'll start to discolor the longer you use it. If you don't, if you use them less frequently, then you'll be fine with PET, especially for a budget offering. I love their accessories that they come with. This battery clamp one is weird, but it worked out perfectly for your boy. Um, <laughs> it comes MC4 to 5521 and also MC4 to Anderson. I'm a little, I struggle a little bit with the 55 to 21 because I don't know what the wire gauge is. On some of their panels, the gauge is appropriate. But this panel, its output, its amp output is probably not as big or as high as the 200 watt, which is about 10 amps. So realistically, I guess the amperage stuff is really interesting because ultimately it depends on the intensity of the sun, right? So if the sun is, most people don't get great sun anyway. If you're in like the desert, the 8 amp, the 10 amps coming through that little, uh, probably like, 
16 gauge cable, 14, probably like 16 gauge, could be a problem and cause the cable to get warm, which makes me wonder why they put it in with the 200 watt panel, but I don't know. And that's me going off of their website. I looked at their 5521 to MC4 um, on the website as a standalone, and the wire gauge is listed there, I believe. And it gave me cause for pause with the 200 watt panel. But maybe their 200 watt panel 5521 cable has a better uh, gauge in it. The cable has never gotten warm for me, but I laid the panel flat. So, you know, I don't know comes with some adapter cables that looks like eight millimeter 5525 you probably got the green one which it works on the Alcatel p501 um, 160 bucks for 140 watt folding panel is a good look it's a quad fold and it's pretty tall so it's probably gonna be very flimsy but you'll probably get like a hundred watts out of this dip or something like that I don't know if you angle it you might get a little bit better so it was a good look um this all powers i don't know if this has been cheaper but 135 for 100 watts is still something to consider um i had this panel as well i gave it to two percent um it was cool legs were super flimsy but it's a budget panel you know what are you gonna do nothing much to say this is uh one of jason Noy's leading uh solar panels he really likes the elecanta uh panel because it has very good output he has a video comparing all of his folding panels where the Elecanta came out on top. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that, but that's how he says it. I learned about it from him, so that's what I'm going with. Alcatel P2001 has 500 watts, 12 to 48 volt, 15 amp. Uh, I, it depends on where you read the information. Um, on the device itself, I think it says something different. On the site, it says something different. Yeah, I mean, but 50 volts is okay because you can barely find a pairing, a panel pairing that will reach up to 50 volts. If you take a 12 volt panel, you know, you're going to get 42. If you take a 40 volt panel, you're probably looking at like 38. So it's fine. Uh, you know, I don't find it necessarily a uh, nitpick over that voltage, but I remember looking into it and the voltage kind of depends on where you're reading. Uh, where you're reading that information. Now, I'm pretty sure, I don't know for sure, but this this might be an ETFE panel. So it's a little bit more expensive. 180 is not a great price, but it does give you really good output. If you kind of contrast that to the 140, I believe is here, 140 being 167, and it's going to give you, well, let's assume it gives you like 100 watts, maybe like 90 something, something like that. Then you jump over here, it's 120 watt. You go watch his video to see what kind of output. But I think he got close to 100 watts. So this is like a, a kind of like normal deal. I wonder if these dips, what's the regular price on it? 229. Yeah, I wouldn't pay 229 for that. that they're wild. That's probably never at 229. It's probably at 199. I don't know. This one was another one that's interesting. I have to put a disclaimer on this. Uh, Aton Power is decent. In terms of, I have seen people review their devices. I don't know about the longevity of the dev devices. I think Jason Noy has de reviewed a rigid style or rigid-ish panel <laughs> that is not like glass or something like that. It's a weird thing. It kind of looks rigid, but it's lighter. Um, but I thought for 120 bucks, um, here you go. Look at this return policy, January 31st. So you got some time. To mess around and see what this is hidden for something that could be considered i don't i wouldn't consider these to be some power cells i know some of these panels try to pass them off as some power cells maybe but not likely that's just my take you can see it kind of looks like the jackery but even in the picture they'd be looking all flimsy and floppy i don't know at tone risk but it's cheap 120 bucks And then this is back at its sale price, 209. I mean, you know, don't have to say much about this. This one is the new king of the hill, in my opinion. Uh, EcoFlow has LiPo coming out in their River 2 series. I actually did see some specs today in their group. Um, they're taking some steps backwards on the base model, and it's a whole thing. I'm going to have to make sense of that, and then I'll make a video about it. But 
EcoFlow is getting LiPo in their power stations. The form factor seems interesting, if not cool. Um, so some steps forward, some steps backward. I, I don't know. I really wish it had bi-directional charging. Um, the base model can only take in 110 watts of solar instead of the beastie 200 watts that EcoFlow was kind of like that I was enamored by. Like, man, it could take in 200 watts into a 300 watt hour power station. For as far as power dumping is concerned, that thing was a beast. And also the base model, I don't think can go up to the 600 watts anymore. So the pricing decision is going to be very interesting for them. Um, uh, we'll see what they do, especially with this dip kind of hovering at 209. I don't know if it's going to be appealing because this one has a 600 watt inverter. Now, I think that the size is going to be an interesting thing. Having something that's somewhat capable be uh, a certain size may be appealing. But again, it doesn't have that 200 watt input to solar. So that kind of like that throws me off a bit. I can't really. I don't know. We'll see. Still gathering my thoughts. I'm seeing these 600 watt hour stations popping up on Amazon.uk for 240. Seems almost too good to be true. They're probably lithium ion. Um, 240. Yeah, that. That, that's about right. I, I actually may have a power station in here from Akatel that is a 300 watt hour for like 170. So you can you can get some of these kind of off the beaten path joints at about 50 cents a watt. But you, you got to tread very carefully, man. I guess now would be the season to mess around with some kind of off the beaten path ones because you got a few months. Um, November, December, into January. You got about three months if you buy something now to mess around with it and put it through its paces. And then you don't have to worry about the manufacturer ducking, ducking and dodging you. You could just go straight to Amazon and be like, oh, I'm sending it back. Hopefully the return policy is the same in the UK. So making some assumptions there. I dig it. Um, outside of your bedroom window. Some people were talking about some interesting things as it relates to my Sun Power video that I did for apartment dwellers about like magnets and suction cups and Velcro. So that flex power for 80 bucks could be a good option because it has the little, um, what does it have? It has the little like loops in it. So you may be able to do a suction cup with that. And hopefully you don't have to worry about it falling down, but you know, hey. Do you think about redoing the mount system to create a shock absorber did oh okay you did think about interesting i i'm sh people have rigid i know you're talking about it's kind of bumpy but people i don't i don't know i i can't speak on it but people have rigid panels on their vans i was actually just asking wayne about van city van life i didn't i don't watch a whole lot of his stuff um but i wondered if he was still uh dating in a relationship with the cat lady um some of his videos are hit or miss for me uh and i haven't seen him in months so you know there's that but he i say that to say he i'm pretty sure he has solar but i don't know if he has rigid panels on top of his van but he has his van kind of kitted with like a, a raise kit or whatever and then he also has uh better suspension and all of that jazz so that's what made me think of that anchor 521 is my favorite <laughs> and most used out of my EB70 and Delta uses inverter and vehicle. Okay, uses inverter and vehicle, charges phones, controller, bi-directional USB-C, LiPo, small. Yeah, I hear you. I have some notes around here uh, about that device because it's 199 right now, but I, I, I just think in most cases, you can't really convince me to do the anchor when the uh what's it called the eb3a is 210 that's just tough that's just the same thing with the energizer p320 um no quick charge yeah i took some very advanced some interesting notes from watching a bunch of videos about the anchor let's see if i could adjust that focus a little bit this is some of the notes that I took on the Anchor 521. I was just trying to kind of compare it and all that jazz. Let's see if I could get my focus better. We'll live with that. So I need to do a video about that. I think it's going to be a live stream. 
uh, more than a sit down video. I wish Anchor valued small channels because they could send me one. <laughs> but they send it to the big ones and I can't be mad at that at all. Back to the deals. These deals are expiring today. So if you speak of the anchor and it, it appears, right? <laughs> there were some things about the anchor that I did not like. I did not like, um, I believe the solar, the charging was 60 watts max from solar. Now, if you're going to not use this dip as that, you just use it as a nice little power station. I can't get a feel for the size from this video, even though I've watched Silver Symbols video. I, I didn't really get a, a good feel for the size. I wonder if it's as big as a Jackery. It'd be nice to have one. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be nice to have one to be able to try it out. I don't need any more 250 to 300 watt hour uh, power stations. But if I was inclined, quick deviation. I actually thought about, um, I thought about, I, I will entertain in the future selling some of my power stations to get rid of them quicker. What I mean by that is this. I do not mind giving away my power stations, especially if I get something to replace a power station um, and I don't need it anymore. Like I thought I was gonna get that Vito Man joint that was gonna be like a thousand watt hours and they were thinking about sending me the extra battery, but I don't know, I, you know, whatever. Uh, it didn't materialize. But uh, when I got that, I was like, man, should I get rid of three 300 watt hour ones because I'll have this one 1000 watt hour one. So I kind of think along those terms because I use all of these power stations now that I could tell is kind of getting close to being the one that I want to let go. Um, it's like the Acatel, the smart list, uh, the bull bat is clutch. If I get a, if I can get a, a situation where I start to, um, because my bull bat is kind of optional where I start to be in a situation where my EB3A is then like my new bull bat, whereas that's the one I float around, which I'm getting close to, to be honest with you. Um, that Those situations are what allows me to kind of let stuff go. But I thought about just selling stuff in order to let stuff go quicker, like 100 bucks, 120 bucks or something like that, plus shipping. If somebody wanted like the Acatel or the Smart List, which are 500 watt hour devices, I had something reasonable that makes it a good deal. But then it would like force me kind of to get rid of it. And then that money could go towards the purchase of something, even though I don't necessarily like being out here buying power stations. Um, not really the biggest fan of that, but hey, cow dog kind of sore. So I thought about that. So there may come a point where I want to sell some of my power stations. But the natural order of things is to give them away as I no longer need them and as they're replaced by better, more useful, more feature rich, rich devices that I can actually use and implement. So, you know, there's that. Like the EcoFlow River, right? That one is in my main entertainment zone because it takes in 200 watts of solar. It has the ability to be controlled remotely. I can use it with these little smart switches. I just downloaded the app for these today. I have four of them. They were taking up a lot of space on my desk, so I just dumped them into each other so it could be more manageable. Um, how I envision using it is when I travel or when I'm away, I'm going to use these Wi-Fi connected smart switches to turn on the power during the night to give the, the, the device power to charge it up and then turn off AC power during the day when the solar kicks in. I can also kind of uh, use that alongside of my um, cameras to see if the sun is out. Like, let's say I'm out of town or something like that. Like me and the family are out of town. I could do that. That's my idea for this. I can't do that with the Blue Eddy because it's only Bluetooth. I can do it with the EcoFlow because it's Wi-Fi connected. Just a bit of a caveat, I have it connected on my wireless. I'm not a big fan of putting devices on my wireless. So I put it on my guest wireless. That way it's not touching my network. I'm just, I'm, I'm not, I'm a little paranoid as it relates to that. Um, so it's on my guest network along with my wise cameras and used to be my Yi cameras and stuff like that. Certain things like that, I put on the network outside of my network. Uh, it's effective for me, I guess. Um, but that one is there because it has all that functionality. But say I got an EcoFlow Mini or an EcoFlow Delta 2 or EcoFlow Delta, whatever, 
then that would essentially be probably the thing that I put over there. Outside of size limitations, it will replace that functionality. And then that EcoFlow can be used as a Lanyap device. And then now I have a legit device that can take in 200 watts instead of struggling with all of these, like the bull bat and the big blue um, and the oops, which are all limited at about 100 watts. The bull bat is nice because it can get up to 125 watts. That thing has saved me many times in my zone one which has a 200 watt panel when my EcoFlow was having issues. I pulled the EcoFlow out of the situation and start making videos. Those videos have not been edited together, um, but I do have them. Um, and that bull bat was holding me down. That bull bat has been used day in and day out on solar at almost all the time. But then now the EcoFlow River could replace kind of the bull bat because it's a 500 watt hour. So you see where I'm getting at here. You know what I mean? So ideally, to push the bull bat out of the door to give it away, it'd be nice if I got a 500 watt hour device that could take in about 150 watts of solar, like that Zendor Super Base M. Um, and then the bull bat becomes obsolete to me. And then y'all want y'all could have it. So that's that's how my thinking goes. Anyway, planes on a snake. Can you see that you're saving on your energy bill? Yes, I save about a dollar a day because I have a ton of panels. Um, which comes out to about $30 a month if you assume I got sun the whole time. Um, yeah, it's a good look. I can produce about 1.5 kilowatts of power hypothetically. It's a little bit higher on paper and probably a little bit lower realistically. But I have a 320-watt panel that produces about 225 watts. I have two 200 watt panels in series so that's 400 watts i got a 320 and then 800 watts across these four panels you know what i mean so each of those those two sets give me about 260 watts 250 watts a piece just right there i'm producing about 700 watts of solar almost a kilowatt per hour if the sun is out and the angle is good that's a whole situation because um, I'm not the biggest fan of series, but I found that once I started getting more panels, I moved my panels less and less. I wasn't as thirsty for power. Um, so I just put them in series to do some cable management and minimize the amount of cables I have running into my garage. Um, so it saves me money. I get about a dollar a day. And to put that in perspective, energy for me costs about like $4 a day, $3 a day. On a high day, $5 a day. So it'd be saving about 20%. 25%, 30% on my bill just because I have these solar panels is a good look, just to put it all into perspective. This will be a good little blip to put out there as a short version of a video. All right, back to the deals. This one is interesting, nothing spectacular here. It is uh, uh, like a basically a Golab style device. It's pretty much exactly the same, just by a different name. Somebody asked about this before, um, but it's the same device. 300 watt hours for $199, which was uh, Golab's claim to fame. Um, getting 300 watt hours for 200 bucks was a good look. I have one of those devices. I purchased it personally. Um, they ended up giving me my money back for it because I was a YouTuber, but I was compelled enough to buy the device. Now, at about $130 or whatever the cheapest price for the i200 is, I think two of those is a little more compelling. But, you know, you get into, OK, you're going to spend $300. What else could you get? But then you would have 500 watt hours on paper instead of spending $300 on the, you know, back in the day, the eco flow for 280. But you only have 286 watt hours. So that's kind of how my brain thinks. Interesting dip. Compared to the EB3A, no competition. But the EB3A sits at about 240 on normal days. It's 210 now. Oh, guys, it, I, I don't know if I have a link in the... I don't think I have a link in the video. Um, if you plan on buying any of this stuff, or if you just want to kind of poke around or whatever, use one of my affiliate links if you want me to get credited for any of these particular things. If you don't care, it's all good. I, you know... I hold no ill will against it. This is the Acatel P300. Um, I mentioned this earlier when he was talking about uh, when you were talking about the um, 600 watts for about half. So this is about 300 watts 
280 watt hours for about 160 bucks. I like to see that a little lower, but it's an interesting little device. It has a bi-directional USB-C port, according to them. I don't see that denoted on their screen, but that's what they say. You can even see on the screen here that it shows the USB-C in right there in the middle above the 21%. It's an interesting little device. I'm pretty sure this uh, is lithium ion or whatever the non lifeful battery ch chemistry is. Oh, we got to the end of the list here. Interesting. We're almost done. Um, somebody commented during a certain period of time. I wonder what this uh, this DCN thing is. It's probably something weird, too. Even though, actually, it looks a little bit smaller than this joint down here, the 12 volts at 8 amps. 13 volts at 4 amps. That's what, like 50, 50 watts of solar input power? So that sucks, but it's on sale. Hey, Doug Life. What's the last one? Last one. Oh, this one is interesting. Uh, it's a techie. I stumbled across this one before, and if I remember correctly, it does not have pass-through charging. The Satechi that I have does not have pass-through charging. The bigger one, the 500-watt-hour one, it doesn't have pass-through charging, but it does have dual charging, which is cool. My smart list has dual charging, which is cool. The smart list has a weird port. That's another thing that is interesting. I don't like these devices that have these one-off ports. I like 5521, 5525, and 8 millimeter. 5525 is kind of like the best of the bunch, in my opinion, because it's still kind of small, but it's very capable of taking in a good bit of solar. 8 millimeter, I'm less impressed with because it just feels like it gets loose really quick, but I don't know. Uh, it makes you kind of value XT60, but XT60 is almost too hard to get out. I think Anderson is probably the best joint, and I struggled with that when uh, people were touting Anderson for putting them on solar panels. And XT60, when Will was when I was first start watch, watching Will Prouse, um, he was doing a lot of soldering with XT60, and I'm like, it's not even waterproof. But I guess at the panel, yeah, it's not waterproof. So you're putting that on a rigid panel, it's like. It's less than ideal. Anderson is not waterproof. Um, but outside of connecting that to a panel, being outside in the elements, Anderson inside your house is perfect. I don't think there's a better connection out there. It's the best of all the connections. I'm just saying. Dog life. Did you guys find any of these deals compelling? And I do feel like you should buy a, a panel. Um, for $84. Actually, you know what? I got 20 bucks on it. So let me know. I can send you through Cash App. I got 20 bucks on your $84 panel just uh, out of kindness and giving back to the community. Um, and take me up on that. What's, what's a dub? A dub once. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's kind of like my threshold for um, kindness. Uh, I, I, I can I can kind of take $20 coming out of my pocket. <laughs> What's up, Eddie T? I need money. Hey, that's why they have jobs. We all get it that way. Or you can start a YouTube channel, get a few coins, you know what I mean? But you got to work at it. Thug life. Now, I am home alone. Um, I do have some updates for you guys. Oh, snap. I don't know if you hear that hum, but my uh my eb70 is running this live let me get this out of the way i have this super interesting device i need to make a video on i love this little thing this is the gulu like 280 um why because it's yellow but it's basically a power station without the ac so it's purely like dc power and the interesting thing is it comes with a little inverter that can um give it power and it's a battery starter thingy which i have had need of a while so this one is about 280 something watt hours compared to this is 299 watt hours this is 280 like look at the size difference there i love this i love this i don't always need ac and then on these smaller power stations, because their batteries are typically 12-volt battery configurations, 
the DC is actually more efficient than the AC. Now, when you start to get up to the AC 200Ps, you know, your Delta Pros, your Alcatels, those are typically like 48 volt batteries or whatever. Then they have to buck. It's like a buck boost kind of thing. Um, they have to drop the voltage down to make it 13.5, a 13.6, a 12.7. So it's regulation. So when you have to take 48 volts down to 13 point whatever, you lose efficiency. My understanding is that that's why these devices now, even though when we were early on in the solar game, you know, dealing with the EcoFlows and the Jackeries and stuff like that, DC was more efficient than AC. But as we've matured and gone up in power, these big old power stations, DC is not more efficient than AC now. And a lot of times AC is more efficient than DC, which is bananas. But that little dip, let's just call it 300 watt hours because it's a little bit less. Uh, I think the dip is like $180. It's not necessarily the greatest deal, but it's a compelling little offering. And I'll make a video about that soon. It has a 100 watt PD port on it. It is bi-directional which is great or annoying, <laughs> depending on what you're going to use to charge it. And I love this screen. This screen shows percentage and um, what's going out, which is super useful. And uh, did I tell y'all it has a little inverter that it comes with as well? It, it's a modified sine wave inverter. The connection may not be the greatest, but it comes with this little dip. So you could plug this right into its DC 12-volt uh, socket, and then it gives you an AC outlet, a uh, USB-C joint, which you probably shouldn't use because it's taking DC to AC to DC, which is weird. That may not be accurate because this is a 12-volt joint. Because some inverters have, uh, they have, you plug them into your car and then you get AC output. And then some people have criticized them for having the USB ports on it. But I don't know if I wonder if this is just plain DC. I don't think it I wonder if it goes from DC to AC to DC because of the device and how it's wired. But that's a conversation for another day as a modified sine wave inverter. That's not great. But I mean, if you needed to just pop in, um, which I have thought about, if you need to just pop in an anchor you know, whatever computer, uh, a computer power brick or something like that, which has its own capacitors in there, which typically is okay on modified sign. Um, then this could be a good little look. You could actually use this in other scenarios where you don't want to turn your AC on on your smaller power stations. On the bigger power stations, it doesn't matter as much because typically the AC is more efficient. And if it's not more efficient, then it's the same. It is tough pulling myself out of that because I prefer to charge over DC because I want to be as most efficient as possible. But then I just have to keep telling myself that, dude, AC is the same. You're going to get 84% out of the power station on DC. You're going to get 81%, 79%. Out of AC, I'm sorry, the other way. You'll get like 84, 85% out of AC, and then you'll turn around and get 81%, 80, 79 out of DC. It's just ridiculous, but it is what it is. You know what I mean? Planes on a snake. Cool little device. That's actually what they sent me in lieu of sending me the Veto Man joint because they were like, yeah, we have to redesign some things. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. That's what's up. So I followed up with them. They're like, yeah, I, I kind of didn't even ask them in such a way that they would have to tell me no. I kind of just alluded to something, I believe. Um, and they were like, yeah, but we could send you this. It probably wasn't a direct contact for Vito Man, but I'm not sure. I don't remember. It was about a month ago. Who can know? Who can know? So that Gulu dip is giving my um, EB70 100 watts. And I'm using about 62 because my EB70 gets hammered daily. If I use it, it never gets full. If I don't use it, it does get full because a 200 watt panel will give you about a thousand watt hours of power throughout the course of the day. Just like a 500, a 100 watt panel will give you about 500 watt hours of power a day. To make that make sense, if you're thinking about it from a saving standpoint, a uh, 100 watt panel when you spend that 84 dollars 100 it'll give you about half of what your <laughs> energy 
company charges you for a kilowatt of power because a kilowatt of power is a thousand watts. If it can produce about 500 watts of power, then it's giving you half that. Your energy is 15 cents. That day, that dip gave you seven cents of power. So, you know, something to think about. It's nice. I like the Gulu because it doesn't have all the other stuff surrounding it. Um, I, I'm really a fan of that. And it has PD on it. I, I don't I don't always need AC. And I was trying to find, it's funny because that inspired me to start looking for bigger just battery banks, but they typically max out at about 2,600 milliamp hours. Um, so that dip for the price that it costs, I really like it. And then it comes with the inverter. So it's not like it's not a power station. It's just modified sign. And it also comes with the ability to jump your car battery. It's a cool little device. Very cool. Very cool little device. I love it. And you could charge it from solar, but you have to use a solar panel that has USB-C on it, which is interesting. Not the most compelling. I wish they made better devices like this. But if you had a normal solar panel, you could go 8 millimeter. You could charge that dip up from the USB-C port at 45 watts because it can take solar charging from uh it actually it can just take usb-c input that's no different than anything else nice little device it's one of my favorite things to grab it's heavy um but you know it's cool it's i like it i like it a lot what's up silver surfer thank you sir i think you're still a patreon supporter also guys i feel like i, I hopefully people don't feel like they have to continue to keep doing the patreon stuff uh, Zelle is fine. Cash App is fine. I, I appreciate anybody who wants to say thanks for coins or just wants to support the channel. That information is always in my um, newer videos down at the bottom. Actually, this right here, this right here is my Cash App extension. Um, just giving people an opportunity. No pressure. Some people are kind. It's not going to be a lot of your viewers. People got their own stuff going on. I get it. Some people are thoughtful and they want to, you know, toss some coins your boys with. Let's see. Okay, I got you. <laughs> so he wasn't asking. <laughs> I dig it. We all need them coins, man. Question. Should you have more than one generator? Uh, have? Should? It's, that's a personal situation. Um, I like multiple more than just having one big. I like uh, multiple small ones. Better situation, multiple big ones. Uh, but it depends. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. It just it depends on your situation. You know, if you don't have kids or pets running around that could chew up your cables, just run an extension cord. You know, it's an easier way to accomplish getting mo more power in one space. Um, I've talked about that. What did I talk about that? In the last live, I think I, I didn't put timestamps in that. I need to put timestamps in our family. Uh, live. Della and I did our first first comes marriage style podcast. We did a preview on our The Richards Revealed um, channel. I wanted to change the name of the channel, but it just is what it is. You know, we're going to be known in some capacity. People work hard enough. They can figure out your information anyway. So I'm just going to have to let go of that. I'm not going to be forward about it, but I can't necessarily hide the stuff either. Um, I need to put time stamps in that video. I'll... Um, I talked about that in the last video. I'll try and put a timestamp in that as well. If I didn't start already, I'm not sure. I think I did, though. Maybe I did. Going to use my folding panel to charge a DIY battery to charge enhancer to the charge enhancer for the second input. There's a potential for me coming, getting my hands on an AC200P in the next like month or so, and I'm excited about that. I'm very excited about it. Because in my current situation, I have the video that I'm going to put out on Patreon about my panels and how I've kind of walked through my panels. It's going to be a bit of a rough cut, but it just shows my evolution and what I've been doing with the panels and all of that jazz. So now I have um, panels in series. I had two sets. I had one set of panels in series. And then I went ahead and I did the other set of panels in series. Because two of my 200 watt panels, one would go into my EB120 and one was going into my EcoFlow. But I pulled my EcoFlow out of that array um, in the basement. I put it up here for what I was talking about earlier. And then I took those two 
200 watt panels. I reconfigured them a little bit so that they match better. And I put them into my, um, my MPPT charge controller for my batteries, which is a 20 to 50 volt range. So I can't do more than one panel in series, which I wish I could, because I will put the 400 watt array on my EB120. And then I will put this 300 watt array that I just shared the short about today with the three energy panels. I will put that into the battery charger, but it can't take more than 50 volts. So that's a problem. Um, but if I can get that AC 200 P, I'm going to be like bump it. And I'm going to put all four of those panels in series and go directly into the AC 200 P. The AC 200 P also gives me some flexibility because I could use that DC enhancer, grab one of those, and then I could take my Renogy 320 and pump that into the AC 200 P as well. That's an ideal situation, um, especially if I got my transfer switch, because then all of that power is coming into one power box to power the stuff in my house instead of what I have right now, which is split kind of input. And then I'll still have solar panels going into those other devices, I think. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it work. I'll, I'll make it work for sure. But it's an interesting kind of situation I have right now. The wires are a little bit less of a pain because I don't have as many sets of cables coming in. I had about eight. Now I'm down to about four and a possible for my space players, um, which is going to come out to be five. So I went from like about eight sets of panels, eight sets of cables coming in, which is two a piece, I believe. So it's one, two, some of them were, yeah, I had a lot of cables coming into the, the garage door. So I'm really getting into a space where it's just like, if I have the ability to put them in series, I'm just going to do that. I didn't always have the ability that I could tell in the ACE Volt changed that for me. The EB120 was always on the table for putting things in the series, but I didn't really go with it because I had other devices that could take it up to 200 watts. So it's like, why put something in series where shade could impact it when I could have it going into its own device, giving it all of that power? But now, because I have a couple of devices that can take all of that power, and I also have enough panels to where I'm not thirsty for power, so if something is shaded, then something else is getting power. I have a little bit more flexibility, so I'm not starving for solar power, so I could kind of deal with the joint. Also, one could argue that me moving my panels around produced about the same amount of power uh, I don't know if I want to go there. I was going to say they produce about the same amount of power as them just kind of like laying still, but being two of them. But that's just not true. Because if I could put a 200 watt panel in about eight hours of sun versus a 400 watt array in about five hours of sun, then that doesn't, I don't know if that comp if that equals out to be the same thing. Setite likes doing the maths, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the AC 200P for $1,200 is a bargain. Yeah, I could kind of see that. Nope, just died on my, my fan on my EB70 has been running all this time because it was getting more than 100 watts. Um, is that a bargain? It's 2,000 watt hours, 2,000 watt inverter, LifePo. Wireless charging, 700 watts of solar. Um, the ability to put more solar in the AC output. It charges pretty slow from the wall. I'm comparing it in my mind to the Acatel in the Ace Volt style devices, which are 2000 and 2000. They can take in 500 watts of solar, um, but they charge at 1100 watts from the wall which is good for people who have to deal with like blackouts and brownouts and stuff like that. Um, a rolling blackouts, I should say, or a storm is coming and you kind of have to charge your stuff up as quickly as possible. Those devices are ideal for that. So I, I'd say that that's a, that's a good deal. The only downside is that you have to have those panels in series, which can be problematic. Um, but then you solve that with just two 100 watt panels. Um, but you can't use one 
200 watt panel, which is kind of, it was a downside for me, but I was going to make it work when I bought it. I was just going to put either two 100 watt panels in series or multiple, or I was going to put two 12 volt 200 watt panels in series. Prepping on the creek. What's up, sir? AC200P is one of the best deals out there with the coupon on Amazon. The thing is still a beast. Let's see what the AC200P is hitting for on Amazizzle. Uh, AC. Oh, it's not that great. <laughs> Where is it $1,200 at? Because I see $1,600 with a $200 coupon. I know it did go on sale once. And it was right around eleven ninety nine or maybe twelve ninety nine. Twelve ninety nine wasn't as compelling to me. Eleven ninety nine was interesting. It was interesting. Yeah, I don't, I'm seeing something different from y'all right now. Amazon playing tricks on me. I had sixteen hundred with a two hundred watt coupon, a two hundred dollar coupon. Which is, uh, I'm not moved by that. Let's see, Moe's Prepping Tech. Do you use energy monitoring devices? They have one on sale on Amazon that pinpoints what your house uses the most. It's called the Sense Energy. It's 20% off right now. I think that dip is like $2.99. So 20% off is still it's, it's a bit too rich to, for my blood. Plus, my uh, my panel in my home just feels janky. So um, I'll be chilling. Monitor. But I am aware of that. I, I've i always been, before I even got into solar, I was conscious of my energy use and I was looking into stuff like this. Da, 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 da. Okay, there's different levels. The cheapest one I see is 240 289 Yeah, that's a bit much just to get some information. I don't know. I just look at my bill and I kind of figure out what's doing what. But I hear you. Um, that's a good point. My dog would definitely <laughs> chew up any cables laying on the ground, running on the ground. I see a lot of Gulu. Yeah, it's, it's like an interesting little company. Another company makes that device as well. Um, I saw it today. I added it to my cart. Oh, that's interesting. Listen, listen, man, let me... I could, they probably would send you one. Maybe, maybe not. We'll, we'll have the conversation and see if you could get one to do a review on. I don't know if it would be Amazon or a YouTube video, but it's an interesting little device. I've never tested the jumper cable dip, but I have no reason to believe it won't work. See, you're right. My 200, my glass is not working. <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> Must have changed. It was a better deal than that. I got you, Perfect on the Creek. Since only has one set of connections, it guesses at your appliances. Get the Emporia. Yeah, I'm not getting any of them. Um, I may entertain something like that once my panel is updated or whenever we buy a new house, which may happen some point in the future. Um, we're really outgrowing this house. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Refurbished 300, B300 batteries on eBay from Direct from Blue Eddy is 1400 something. I don't pay attention to those batteries, even though the Blue Eddy batteries are a lot more useful than anything else. But I don't pay attention to them. I don't. I don't keep that in mind. I don't have any of the devices. First and foremost, I do need to start doing a better job of staying abreast of what's going on as it relates to these solar power devices. I'm extremely utilitarian. Uh, most of this channel is really going along my journey and what I'm interested in. And, you know, some of the things that you guys are interested in and so on and so forth. But I really have to be intentional with uh, making sure that I'm staying abreast of what's going on so that I can fill these questions and make these videos. And then I can make more um, timely videos because I'm I'm slow, man. I'm super slow. They're on the Pixel 6 now. I have a Pixel 3. So, you know. <laughs> oh, somebody... Uh... Hit me up on Patreon, James. I'm not going to put your whole information out there. Um, but thank you for the $5 uh, Patreon joint. Um, I'm open to input on those dips. I, I have like about probably, including James, I have like seven patrons now. Um, I would love to get more. I'd love to build up that community. And then we could have like separate little live streams for just us and the Patreon folks. 
um, uh, separate videos and things like that. I think it's an interesting little platform for people who are really rock with solar and want to get down and support your boy, toss a few coins my way because you enjoy the content. That's really what it is. So you enjoy the content, you want to support the creator. And for supporting that creator, that creator gives you things um, to say thanks. Patreon is not meant to be another like job. It's like you rock with it enough to just be like, I, I rock with you. I want to contribute to your whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, let me show this because I wasn't sharing my screen just to give you guys a, an idea of what this sense stuff is about. You can see those leads right there. They go on your terminals or whatever. Um, and they'll tell you what's using power and you can monitor it via the app and all that jazz. The stuff is cool. This is the Emporia one or oh, one of the Emporia ones that uh, set type was talking about a 50 amp circuit. That's interesting. I wonder if that's what we have. I think the dude was talking about upgrading us from a 100 100 amp line to a 200 amp line. So this is kind of limited. I'm sure they have various levels. Interesting, you know, I like the idea, but um, way back when, when I was into it, I definitely didn't have $300 to mess around with this stuff. And I don't know how committed I am to doing it now because it's ultimately just going to guess. And then you can kind of like help it along, figure out what's what and all that jazz. I'm not that vested. It's like, man, I'll have 200 watt hour days, 300 watt hour days. And when I go higher, I kind of know what it is. It's my air conditioner or it's a heater. I mean, it's not, it's not deep. <laughs> I would like to know what my water heater is doing. I actually have a video where I tried to see about powering my furnace from a uh, power station, but my furnace adapter is, it's plated. The thing is plugged in and it has like a box around it, a metal box around it. So I can't mess with it. And that was the, I'm a, I drew the line there, but I was endeavoring to see if I could power it from a power station. I think it was once I got maybe the EB120 because it's just, it's gas and it's fan forced. So I can't use that much power. Um, so I thought I should be able to run this if we lost power in an emergency. And maybe I'll revisit it. But once I came across that uh, that metal plate encasing, I was like, yeah, I'm out at this point. I ain't messing with this man. Mess around. I hurt myself. Let's see. So you have a 100 or a 200 amp panel, but your circuits are probably 30 amp. I got gotcha. you. The dual poles might be 50 to 60 for air conditioning. That makes sense. Thanks for that insight, man. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're just saying there's another useful device on Amazon sale. It tells you what you're, you're using. It's like 12 bucks. Oh, a smart plug. Yeah, I got these smart plugs. They they um tell me how much power I'm using. Uh, I wasn't going to get a smart plug that didn't do that. I looked into smart plugs many moons ago. Casa was kind of the way I was going. And I would find them on the marketplace, but they were never the ones that were um, energy monitoring. But, so I never pulled the switch trigger. I had to upgrade my Pixel 3 XL a few months ago since mine didn't have a setting for 4G or 5G. Upgraded my wife's Pixel 3 XL too. Oh, that's cool. I didn't like the XL. The XL was weird. I think it has didn't have a weird like um, forehead on it or something. It was very strange. Um, this is my wife's old Pixel 3. My Pixel 3 died. I think it died. I'm, I shouldn't say that. All I know is I used to charge it wires, wirelessly on my EB70, and then at some point, it just stopped charging. And some people, when I was doing research on it, they were like, yeah, don't charge your Pixel 3 wirelessly. And I was like, dang. It wasn't a whole lot of folks. It was like a, a Reddit or something like that. And they were like, yeah, I'll never charge that thing wirelessly again. And this Pixel 3 that I got from her will not go on a wireless charger. I'm not going to do it. My LG V40 that was given to me by a friend of the family, I do charge that one wirelessly. Um, I do need to pull files off of that in case that one kicks the bucket. But I'm not putting this Pixel 3 back on there, that's for sure. Interesting. Okay. I mean, I want a legit transfer switch. I need like, I want at least six um, joints on it. Because we don't use a lot of power, but I wanted to be able to cover a majority of the things we use in the house. Um, I hope my wife brings me some food. Jeez. 
I'm not hungry, but it'd be nice to eat. Let's see here. Okay, speaking of the Gulu, um, let me pull it up here. This is the red one. The yellow one is typically cheaper, but you can see that this dip is $199 with a $40 coupon on it. Now, in the grand scheme of things, um, I think the jumper cables makes it appealing. Um, I like a lot of things about it. It has a small form factor. It has the optional thing to turn it into a power station. I think that that's really cool. $199 minus $160 plus tax for 280 watt hours. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And then you got this one is $189 what twenty dollars off the yellow one is typically the cheaper one or maybe one of them was cheaper than the other one for sure and it was like man crazy like it was like drastically cheaper <laughs> like the same device just different colors but different prices i like this little device man i'm not saying that it's something that you should grab but for a person whose laptop charges from USB-C, who i have this little mini computer let me take this off now I had this little mini computer that charges off a of USB-C. My kid, I just got my oldest into um, Steam. The like online gaming joint or whatever. Any of you guys have Steam? I know it's that type might have Steam. Um, what's going on, my man? Came to win. Uh, I have this thing that runs off a of USB-C. They had a version of it that ran off a of USB-C, but it wasn't PD. So I could use this PD port to power this computer. And run, it's going to run my Plex server. I installed Plex on it. Plex and Resilio Sync today or yesterday or something like that. But my kid has been using it um, to play Steam on because he wanted this teardown game. Uh, but it's like instead of having to grab a power station, I could just grab that little brick when uh, my wife's laptop needs to be charged. Something just sitting next to the laptop. This is a cool little option to grab. It's, it's weighty, but... It doesn't take up as much space and it has a nice little light on here, which is good for throwing it in my kids room because they like a little bit extra light because, you know, they may be dealing with some things that I won't get into just from a, a spiritual perspective. Whether you subscribe to that or not, you know, it's, it's up to you. <laughs> uh, one thing I don't I can say I don't like about it is I don't like these little flaps. I think they're like I don't know if they're weatherproof or whatever, but, you know, it's to keep dirt out. After I do the video, I will probably pull these off. I don't like flaps. That's I didn't like that. I don't like that about the AC200P that it has all those dust covers. I don't personally need that type of protection. I'm glad that it's there, but I don't like it. These will probably come off. I'll probably keep this one on. But uh, this just laying flat like that, kind of being in the way, I'm not a fan of that. All right. Of course, I have Steam. I even just bought a Steam Deck. I wondered if Steam Deck was the thing that was related to Steam. I just I was invested enough to see if I could connect the dots. Um, I wonder if you have any. What kind of games do you play? Because I'm I'm saying because you could share your library. <laughs> I need to create separate accounts. Maybe I'll create an account for me, and then the people that I connect with that have Steam because you could share it as a family. But it gives you access to the whole library. Um, instead of like, you can't say share these in terms of my kid having an account. I wouldn't want him to see any type of foolishness. These adults that have steam will be playing, but maybe I have a situation where I have a steam account. He has one. And then his little brother has one, which I have to do anyway, because I have to separate them out. Um, my middle boy, I'll say, um, he's into like driving games and they always watch the crashing cars videos so for a while i have wanted to get the beam ng game um so that he could play that and kind of do that whole thing uh but it's an interesting little platform let's see oh, okay yeah forehead <laughs> wireless charging should be used sparingly it wastes a lot of power yeah that's fair i i'm mindful of it but convenience considering it's powered off of solar i, I don't mind it I was never a wireless charging guy, to be honest with you. But it's like, man, when you, once you use it, it's like, this is really cool. This is super convenient. My iPhone 8 does it. I use that all the time. And then I'll use the wired charger to charge my iPhone 7. Um, so. 
now I have to look into the Steam Deck. I have to, I have to kind of make that connection. I'm gonna look into that soon. I, I feel like it was all the rage, right? Isn't it a thing that it may be hard to get um, hands on? I'm gonna pull out my wife's old laptop. Um, she has an old like Lenovo Y two hundred and thirty or three hundred and twenty or something like that. Um, and see if I could use Steam on that because Steam struggles. That teardown game struggles on this little, you know, whatever this. It's not a cell run. I think it is a cell run. It's just like the N one instead of the J one. That process struggles on that dude. Did you ever find a DC blanket, man? I, I'm I'm not vested. Actually, let's look into that. Somebody was talking about the DC blankets earlier. I, I was gonna say I was gonna look into see if anything. If there are any deals on the DC blankets, I need to revisit that. I want to put more storage in this little PC, but I don't need to. We're going to do, I guess I can pull this up. Let's share this. So you can see here, like I was saying, this is early access, which is these uh, prime deals. Now let's do heated blanket. I've never been impressed with what I've been able to find, but because I have this four months, three months to test these dips out, I'm going to probably have my wife buy at least the top two that I decide on. Maybe an AC one and a DC one. Maybe. That's not looking bad. Um, that's some good reviews. Uh, I wonder how big it is, but I want a bigger one. See, that one looks cool, too. Electric blanket heated throw. It's pretty big because I want one to be able to use for me and my wife. 10 hours auto off. This is looking promising. It has quite a few colors. 50 bucks. I could get behind that. So um, I'm, I may have to pull the trigger on a couple of these soon just to get the savings. And then um, bear hug. Dang, that thing is huge. Dual controllers, blah, 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 blah. I'm sure this thing is... Um, an AC powered uh, joint. Some of them are washable and all that jazz. It's a whole thing. Oh, there's quite a bit of these out here. I hope they've gotten better since the last time I looked about six to eight months ago. Oh, I appreciate that, Ann. Thank you. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Let's see here. You heard about the power station that can actually. You heard about that power station. Um, you actually used a jumpy car. Perpin on the Creek made a video about it. I thought about getting one. Oh, I don't know. Which one? What, Perpin on the Creek is around here. Will Prowse said in one of his videos, he always takes <laughs> those flaps off. <laughs> yeah, I don't like them. I'm not a fan of them. It took forever to get, but they are caught up on the pre-orders now, I think. Okay, yeah. I knew it was like a whole thing about these Steam decks. I don't know nothing about them. Speaking of Steam, not solar related, you can buy a Steam Deck now instead of making a reservation. Thanks for that, Mo. I appreciate that. I'd like a cheap DC blanket as a way to warm batteries in my shed. Oh, that's peculiar. Mm. Okay. All right, the weighted blanket is better. Oh, I actually, what I don't know what a weighted blanket is, so I'm gonna have to look into that. What's up, brother? I'm late, but did you ever give your thoughts on the anchor power station? Briefly, I just know that it doesn't pull in a lot of power from solar. Um, I like the 199 price point, but at you spend another ten dollars, you could get the EB3A, which is crushing everything. I just wish that dip was a little more watt hour heavy. Like it's big enough, jeez. Um, which is interesting to contrast that to the new EcoFlow one, which I was able to see the specs today in the group. Uh, EcoFlow Club or something like that. They had, the EcoFlow admin had a post in there that talked about the specs. Um, because their base model may be a lot smaller than the EB3A. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not super vested at the moment. I'll kind of see as things come around. Hey, Randy. Um, But it could be peculiar. But the EB3A is still smoking that one. It has a 600 watt inverter instead of the 300 compared to the EcoFlow base model. The River 2 is what I'm talking about. Uh, I can pull this down. What else? It only takes 100 watts of solar, 110 to be specific. 
uh, compared to the 200 watts in theory with the 8 amp input limitation. Yeah, they kind of they kind of kneecap that one a little bit. I'm not a fan. So, yeah. Yeah, Kimber Jack says she loves her weighted blanket. Now, I did get a wool blanket last winter, the one that Jason Nori recommended. So I have a wool blanket. I haven't even washed it yet. But I want a DC blanket because I got all these power stations, man. If I could minimize the ability, I think my wife is going to love it. Um, she likes a warmer house, but uh, the kids sleep a little colder, so they sleep more comfortably, as we all do, really. You know what I mean? Um, so to have a heated blanket would be cool. I just need something that's big enough for the both of us. And it looks like there's some nice offerings here that have early access um, discounts on them. So I'll probably spend like about a hundred bucks trying to find one that's decent, which will end up being about two. Um, even though money is a little tight for your boy, if I'm keeping it a buck. Um, but yeah, I've been wanting one for years. The Teslas, you can use the 500 max to charge it. And the P, the F-150, one of those trucks. Wait, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. That came through a little bit disjointed. And freaking heated blankets. Oh, snap. Let's talk about this real quick. Quick deviation back to solar. Check out these EcoFlow panels. Can you charge the Gulu from solar? Only if it's a USB-C panel, which is interesting. Or you could take a panel that has USB-C and charge it from that because it can be charged from USB-C at any rate. I don't even know that they make a lot of USB-C panels. The only USB-C panel that I knew was that OG EcoFlow one for that OG EcoFlow power station that was like $800 for like 286 watt hours. <laughs> Look at these panels, man. EcoFlow has panels. They have 100 watt panels too. Um, they're a little costly, as is the thing with EcoFlow. Uh, 400 watt, two pieces for $1,000 with the coupon. The Renogy also has 450 watt panels and 550 watt panels. They're at a, a straight dollar a watt. These are interesting. Now, one thing that I found compelling, I was talking to Set Tight about this. The measurements on these dips, which I don't know if it's true, but they say general specifications, 68 inches by 45 inches. That's Renogy 320 range. The Renogy 320 is about 68 inches by like 40. I think it's like 41. I don't know if it's 50 pounds, but how in the world did they get a whole extra 80 watts of power in this panel? But that dip, look at it, man. Dip is freaking huge, but I like it. I like 400 watt panels, man. The simplicity in me is always like one power station for one panel. And then now, as these situations get more complex for your boy, I'm more so like, okay, two panels for one power station or four panels for one power station, you know what I mean? Just to have it like beast mode. So I'm kind of graduating to more arrays because I have power stations that can take in a power. But I still love the idea of having my little, um, I don't, like my EB70, I look forward to the day where my EB70 is a power station that can float. Because that dip has 700 watt hour capacity. So I could throw that on a 200 watt panel and not have to worry about it a lot. Um, I probably would have to supplement it by having it power dump the 300 watts into something else, which I can live with, or have it actually powering something kind of lightweight. But if I could get like a real power station right next to my desk, that would be cool. I'd like to have a real power station. I'm just, I just mean bigger when I say real in my entertainment zone. And I already have some nice power stations down in the basement, but I like to have some better ones. You know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I love solar. So I'm going to be making videos for the foreseeable future. So as the channel grows, maybe I'll start getting more love. I'm pretty sure I, I would. It's just good business sense to have people making videos. Uh, it says 23% efficient. That's probably how I guess. Um, sort of energy. Um, 
No, oh, I don't use this browser for that. I only use this browser for Amazon. Give me one second. I don't cross my uh my browsing streams. <laughs> I don't want Amazon in my business. Stay out of my business, Amazon. Jeff Bezos. I actually already have a Renegy page up in Brave. Let's see here. It's the 450 and the 550. Where's the 320 at? I'm not even sharing my screen. Should we do about Christopher Breeze? And hitting some trees. Um, let's see. I feel like this dip is starting to fan starting to come on, struggling a little bit here. Close that. Go back to that. Did you open already? Quick view. Pretty sure this is not what I want, but we're gonna see anyway. Ooh. HTML dump. All right, let's look at these specs. Sixty-six by forty. It's a little bit bigger. That Renogy is thirty. It's sixty-eight by forty-five. Interesting. Forty-eight pounds. What's this one? Oh, 21% versus 23%. Oh, interesting. It's 10 pounds heavier. I got a note in my simple note about this. Dang, I didn't mean to keep that comment up. My bad. I got a note in my simple note about these two panels to talk about them in the future. But this one's 40 pounds. That one's 50 pounds. It's a lot heavier. Um, but yeah, my, I ain't going to spend too much time there. It's in my notes. I'll revisit it on another live. Uh, 21 to 23 percent solar efficiency is 9.5 percent better. Uh, you, you the math dude, man. Does that make sense? I guess that does make sense. 10 percent. I don't know. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, I 200. All right, cool. Now I'm getting into my normal tabs. I basically went through that. I'm gonna be looking at heated blankets tonight, guys, for sure. For sure. And I'm probably going to pick something up, uh, possibly to my wife's dismay. Ah, she ain't going to give me a problem about it, though. Uh, I'm throwing that out there inappropriately. So right now, in my current situation, um, I have a couple videos I need to do. I have embraced the series set up wholeheartedly. For the sake of managing these cables for winter because they're coming in through my garage um, and we're going to use our garage for the winter so that means my car is going to be driving over my cables a lot more which is going to be interesting that may mess things all the way up i feel like if i could get that ac 200p that would kind of help uh, a bit more because then now I'll, I'll have one less set of cables coming in um it'll be interesting to deal with having possibly uh something that can go so high in the voltage and then realistically deal with whether or not i would charge the Alcatel and the ace volt from the ac 200p because i don't have the transfer switch so i just have to manage the power coming in to make sure that it doesn't get to a point where it's full um and then i i have to i have those batteries and stuff so it's gonna be an interesting winter for sure we'll we'll see did you guys have any questions? Answer some questions and then we're going to get on out of here. Another useful thing to pick up for something for a power station is DC lights. I light up my room with those light bulbs instead of turning on light switches with my EB3A. I need to go back and revisit some DC lights. I bought two. I have two USB kind of LED light bulb style joints. Um, those 
don't have in they just they turn on and off and i was talking about a live many moons ago how i wanted to get some ones that could dim because then i could control a watt output uh they use about five watts six watts depending on the power station readout and then there's some someone was telling me about it could have been kimberjack they have some that you can change the color temperature as well so you could go from daylight to warm or from cool to warm i don't know what the opposite of the spectrum is for daylight what the other word is for daylight but you could go from cool to warm and you can dim the brightness and stuff like that i think that that's really cool uh, I'm, I'm into that i just haven't made the time to look into them and I, i'm honestly not pressed uh, i use one in my hallway and i use one down in my basement but i have in my basement i have kind of resorted to using just a full-on lamp uh, I have one of my LED light bulbs in one of my YouTube light stands that we got years ago. It's like a $50 kit uh, that we don't use because it doesn't put out very good light. Um, so that's what I use to light my basement. But I do use that lamp from time to time, that little light bulb. I like the idea of DC lights. I'm really interested in anything DC because, again, this mindset of DC is more efficient. But now with these bigger power stations i might as well not care just throw the light bulb in there and call it a summer it's hard for me to shake that it's like case in point man it's really hard for me to shake that let's see ordered a 100 watt and a 180 bujo v9 bb that should give me enough solar man i'm excited that'd be cool to see how you uh kind of use that stuff what you do with it that should be enough solar to charge my more before the battery runs out i'm off to walmart for some corn beef hash <laughs> I dig it. Do you buy that stuff in bulk, like in big joints? I remember you talking about that before. Phil, what's going on, sir? Love the channel. I keep it up, brother. I appreciate that encouragement, man. Um, just waiting for your update, man. Let me know what's going on. Setite is around here, too. He has the AC200P. Um, he also has a YouTube channel. So, you know, all that jazz. DMAC, what's happening? Oh, subject to change is asking, what is he going to do with that corn beef hash? Uh, there are weather strips you can purchase designed to protect electric cables from vehicle traffic. You can find them on Amazon as well. I was literally thinking the same thing just about my whole setup and how when I put my panels on the in the area that ultimately I hope they're going to live in, if I have to run them across the ground, how would I do that? And I was thinking about wire strips that cars can run over. I was literally just thinking about that like today or yesterday or something like that. Because we need to get our driveway redone. When we bought the house many moons ago, it was just gravel. But I think this much anything with these people, man, they didn't. They have kind of did the job, so it wasn't really properly um, sealed. My wife wants to put concrete down there, so that'll probably be a project for her next summer. Um, I'm not the home project person; she is, and I encourage it. Um, one, because it's, it's, she likes it and she also wants to get into real estate. I haven't talked with her yet, but I feel like she's kind of just sharpening her skills. I'm not the home project dude. I'd rather pay somebody to do that or just deal with what I have. I, I mean, I, I don't care. I was going to do a vinegar, uh, dawn, salt combination to just kill all the grass in the driveway. I never got around to that because she kept using my vinegar. You have to use like a slightly stronger vinegar to do that um, on a super bright day. But I just, I never, I'm super hesitant with stuff like that, mixing things and all that jazz. I never got around to doing it. But once I put, once we get the driveway done, it's going to be interesting how I'm going to have to do that because I may end up having to run the cables away from the house. So probably like a 70 foot or 100 foot cable, then run it right across the, the, the street line, more so closer to the curb, so to speak. There's no curb there, but just to make the point. Um, run it out there, run it through a little cable thing that the car can run over um, and then run the line up against the wall and then into the garage in the same way that my cables are now because my solar panels are on the side of the garage with the gap in the joint, which is probably how the mouse or the mice is getting into my house. <sighs> right. Um, they are outside, but plugged into the house. What are you talking about, Ann? I have new videos coming soon. I'm going to spend the weekend at the new property to solarize my shed. Hey, that's cool. Dig it. 
So I have a dilemma. Um, I have a, a dilemma with how I'm going to run these cables. But hopefully by the time the situation, by the, hopefully by the time next summer rolls around, I'll have the ability to just put my four 190, 180 watt panels in series and have that go into one power station. And then I'll have that situation where it's like one cable producing or taking care of that 800 watt array. It's like seven something or another, 760. 750 or something like that. Um, but that one cable hustle is going to be good. It's going to be south facing, which is going to suck, but I've come to terms with it. I hate the fact that I have to have like a purely south um, facing array like you guys, a lot of you guys do. I like to be able to move my panels, but it, it's going to work out. It's going to work out. And if it doesn't, I have enough panels kind of in my two main zones that can still power stuff. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work out. But I do know I want to be able to have at least one panel that can track the sun. Hopefully, that's a uh, Renogy 320. That would be ideal. Um, or something more efficient by the time that time rolls around. Wouldn't it be nice to get one of those Renogy 400 watt panels or one of those Renogy 450s? I think they get a little unwieldy to handle. That 320 is about is about as much as I can kind of move around easily. But if it stays in the yard, then it's not a problem because then it's just shifting it. And then I'll get um, power from the, the big array during like the main sun hours, which is also problematic for the summer because you want your panels to lay more flat in the summer. So it's going to be it's going to be fun. And by fun, I mean annoying. And on that note, beautiful people, thank you so much for those who you, those of you who hung out. Um, thank you to those people who say thanks for coins. Thank you to the new Patreon who signed up. I appreciate that greatly. Hopefully, some of the uh, videos over there are of interest to you. Uh, you know, that's all I got, man. Y'all be beautiful. I'm out of here. I'll be around in chat for a little bit.